So one thing that you're often going to need to your web applications is some type of rate limiting. And the reason is because a user can log in. And for example, I have this application here where a user can create groups. You come over here and create a group, like testing and test. They can come back here and they can just keep creating groups over and over again. And if a malicious user decides that they want to just kind of mess up your entire system and flood it with data, if you don't have a rate limiter in place, it's going to be a very bad experience for your users because all they see is a bunch of bogus data showing up on their browse page. And additionally, it just puts more strain on your database and your backend. So in this project, I rolled my own rate limiter and it's actually pretty easy to do. Um, here is the interface. I basically call an await on a function called rate limit by IP. And then I say, how many requests can you allow in a certain period of time? So this is saying one request every 10 seconds. And if something bad happens, it'll go ahead and catch the error and throw something called an action error. Now, the reason I'm using this action error is because I'm wrapping this stuff in a next safe action library and it needs an action error to like show it in the UI. But this is the interface. So now if I were to set this to one and save this and go back to my UI, let's just go ahead and create a record. And then I'm gonna go ahead and create another one. And notice that we get a nice toast over here that says, hey, something went wrong, rate limit exceeded. And if you keep trying it within that 10 second window, you'll keep getting um, that toast. But at some point the rate limit will let you go through because that 10 second window has passed. So let's look at how I'm doing rate limit by IP. And so here's the function. Um, this again, this is all in memory. So if you are deploying this on a VPS and you have one server, this works fine. But when you start scaling up your VPS and you have like, let's say two or three or four running behind a load balancer that's doing round robin routing, this is when you run into issues because your rate limiter is living on every VPS in isolation using the machine's memory. So every request will be round robin to a different VPS and technically I can do four requests within that 10 second window if you're doing that. But my advice is again, just keep it simple. If you're just hosting on a single VPS, it's fine to do rate limiting inside of memory. And then if you need to scale up, you could just use Upstash or just use like a Redis cache and have that all live in a centralized place so that your limiting is actually working properly. Also, if you deployed like Vercel or a serverless environment, all bets are off in this approach because every Lambda has its own like memory basically. Anyway, I just got on a tangent. So let's kind of look at how this works. This is by IP. And so when someone calls this function inside of a server action, I call a get IP method, which is just looking at the headers that came in on the request. And I'm checking if X forwarded for a set or if X real IP is set. And then I basically use one of those if they're set and if not, I just return null. And that is how you can kind of check, at least when I deploy this to railway, that's how I can check if the IP is set. Depending on where you deploy, it might not work the same. You might have different headers that are set depending on your deploy service. If you're rolling your own deployment, I don't know, it depends if you have like Nginx or Apache or Caddy in front of your services, you might have a different header maybe. But anyway, you should get the IP address back. And I basically create a tracker object that has an initial count of zero and expires at a zero. And when I make that request, it's gonna go ahead and check, hey, is this already stored in this lookup map? Over here, it's just like a normal JavaScript object. I'm using it as a map and I'm tracking the IP and I'm inserting that new record. So after that, I check, hey, is the tracker, which we, retrieved if it already exists, otherwise you're creating a new one. If it's expired, so it has that 10 second window passed, I go ahead and just reset it back to zero and expires at is set to the current date time now, plus that window size. And then I increment it and then I check, hey, has that count exceeded my limits? And if it does, I just throw an error. So that's, it's pretty straightforward, right? This is very little effort. You can use ChatGPT to generate this. And what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna do the same approach and I'm gonna say rate limit by key. And so instead of getting an IP here, I can just go ahead and say like key, which is gonna be a string. And then instead of saying get IP, we're just gonna go ahead and say key. Now hopefully the keys and the IPs don't overlap and we can just use that same tracking map. Okay, so this one should work fine. Um, and so if we wanted to go back over here, we actually change this to rate limit by key. And then we could pass in the user ID like this, user.id. Now instead of limiting by IP, which will have issues because again, in a DDoS, like people can have tons and tons of IPs they can kind of rotate through. But now I'm actually limiting by the authenticated user. If you have an authenticated user, you have more specific information you can rate limit by 
which is probably a better approach. All right, so let's verify this still works the same way. Um, so let's go here, create a group, create it, go back here, create it again, and we do get the toast, the pop-up. Awesome. So again, let's do a little bit of code cleanup. This code above is basically identical to this code below. The logic is reusable. So what we're going to do is we're going to call rate limit by key here, and we're going to pass it the IP limit and window, and we're going to delete all this. So now we have a function that we can use for our public endpoints that we can limit by an IP address. And then for all authenticated endpoints, we could just rate limit by a key, which will end up being their user ID. But it's generic, so you can kind of limit by whatever you want. Now I do want to make this a little bit um, less verbose. So I'm actually just going to put this error here. I'm going to say this is going to be an action error. And that should still work like a normal error because I think this does extend error. But now I don't have to do all this catch stuff everywhere. Because that was kind of annoying. Rate limit by IP. Let's go over here and we'll do the same thing. So let's get rid of this. Get rid of that. Awesome. So let's just verify. Every time you change code, just go back and make sure you don't break stuff. Go over here. Awesome. So that is how I'm doing rate limiting. And again, there might be like a third party library to do this for you, but just keeping track of something like this in a JavaScript object for the most part will work okay. Um, there might be some caveats or some edge cases where this will keep growing over time and just become very, very large, like a giant JavaScript object. But honestly, like you'd have to be getting a lot of traffic and you'd have to not deploy your application in a very long time for this to grow to a point where it's like going to cause issues. Uh, the biggest issue would probably be a DDoS where it just fills this up with a bunch of random IP addresses. Um, but just keep that in mind. These are things that you need to think about when you're building out a system. And then later on, if you decide that you need to fix something or scale up, you've abstracted everything away inside of a function. So now to refactor this, I could just come in here and change out this code to use Upstash or Redis or something like that. Now we could even take this a step further if you want. Inside of whatever middleware functions you have, you could potentially do some type of default rate limiting. So for all my authenticated actions, let's just say that I want to make sure that a user never abuses too many of my public mutations. So we can just again say rate limit by key. We'll say user.id. And then we'll say every time someone tries to create or run an action, you can do at least 10 times every 10 seconds. That seems like a generous amount, right? I mean, I couldn't see someone creating 10 entries in less than 10 seconds in my system. So this would basically be a, a catch-all, like a default, but um, we probably want to use a different key here. So we're going to go ahead and just do a user ID, and then we're going to say global. This is like a global rate limiting. So that's the power of the abstraction. We can just append something, and now we have two different keys that are kind of keeping track, but this action will have its own special key that's being tracked by the user ID. If that makes sense. And technically what we could do here is this could be uh, create a group. Like let's say you wanted to limit certain actions individually. Well, you could give create group as once every 10 seconds. And then maybe some other things like leaving comments could be five times every 10 seconds, etc. Anyway, I've rambled long enough. If you guys enjoyed watching this, give me a thumbs up. Also leave a comment. If there's a different way that you like to rate limit, let me know. Uh, other than that, have a good day. Happy coding.